Well, great to have your company here with Revelation TV Presents with myself and Dawson. And you've joined me for really a very, very interesting part of a series that we're doing here on Revelation TV with Philip Day. Philip, it's great to have you here. It's great to be and back. We have been, we're in the midst of a four-part series and we're talking about mental health today, which a lot of people will know you for your contributions over the years here on Revelation TV that you've given with regards to physical health and diet and exercise, etc. Um, this is, I feel as if we're, you know, going down an area that really intrigues so many of us because never before, um, as far as I'm concerned, are we hearing so much about depression and mental health disorders. And this all culminated in you writing a book called Mind Game. Tell us a little bit about the events that led up to that. Well, um, at the age of 19, I pulled a hamstring playing squash with my equally obese father at that point. And I, uh, I'm in the doctor's surgery the following Monday uh, in agony. And he's a family friend. And um, he, as he's getting his notes out, he looks at me and he says, how's that new transport business of, you, uh, of yours going, Philip? And I said, it's, Derek, it's gone through the roof. I'm so excited I can't even sleep. And he replied, I've got something for that. And I was put on a drug uh, called lorazepam. And at the time, I didn't realize exactly what it was. But it turns out later, it's a benzodiazepine drug. And within two months, I'm starting to have suicidal thoughts to the point where I'm actually down in Tunbridge Wells, standing on top of Toad Rock, looking over, thinking, that could be a good idea just to jump down there. And just at that moment, a dog walker comes behind me and he goes, step back from that. People come and throw themselves off there. And I just realized that all of a sudden, and of course I knew exactly what it was because I'd, I knew that these thought processes were being changed by the drug I was given. Anyway, that was a, a real wake up call to me. And at that particular point, I started looking into, this is pre-internet, so I'm looking into, um, it's harder to do the research in those days, but I started realizing that there were real problems with how people were being treated. And lots of these drugs were creating issues for lots of people and nothing was really being written about it. And that kind of started me on my quest. So you've, uh, we've got the, um, the book Mind Game, which for anybody out there is an absolutely fascinating read. If you do want to get your, your hands on this, uh, yeah, this is unlike, if, you've, if you're used to reading books on mental health, this one is unlike, I promise you, anything that you've come across before. Um, what is the main premise, you would say, of that book? The main premise is that psychiatry is a pseudoscience. And even today, we do not have one scientific uh, test to diagnose mental illness. Not a single test. Now, that needs to sink in. So if you go to a doctor and say, Doc, I've got depression or I'm, you know, I'm feeling this, that and the other, he has no scientific test. There's no blood, there's no blood test, there's no CAT scan, there's no urine test or anything that will actually specifically give you a diagnosis of a mental disorder. When you pick up... Part of our research into psychiatry was also examining their book, the DSM, Diagnostic Statistical Manual on Mental Disorders, which they keep shoveling in more and more um, uh, pseudo disorders. Today, you can suffer from lottery stress disorder, chronic tax anxiety syndrome. Do you have a problem with that one? How about this one? <laughs> Mathematics disorder. In fact, just recently, I heard that now um, officials are declaring that eating healthy is a mental disorder, orthorexia nervosa, right? So if people are getting the hang of this, then we're being pontificated at by people who have wheedled their way into our society, who were used as expert wit witnesses in court, uh, you know, in, in court cases to determine whether somebody is mentally competent or not. So we're, as I was doing the mind game research, I was just blown away by how many psychiatrists were coming out going, there's not a lot of um, science behind what we're doing. You're not a fan of psychiatry, are you? Well, I, I came into it with, you know, just saying, well, I've heard a lot of people rubbishing it. So I started looking into it and all of a sudden I'm going, well, hang on a minute. The evidence is not here. You know, this is supposed to be a science. And if it's, if it's got science behind it, where is it? because what we're seeing here is objective views on people when they're being depressed and then given medication. Now, the medications are, themselves are worth looking at, and I work with a number of what we call orthomolecular psychiatrists. These are men and women who uh, are taking somebody who's depressed, and they're trying to find out the foundation of cause. You know, somebody is depressed. So let's say you're a doctor and I come to you and I say, well, um, uh, Dr. Anne, I'm depressed. Mm -hmm. First question, these people are saying is, why are you depressed? 
Mm-hmm. That's not a question that's, that's usually asked. Well, I'm depressed because I've got no money and I'm living hand to mouth every single month. Okay, so the answer to that is money, right? Mm-hmm. Not drugs. But if you think about it, how many people within, say, 50 miles of where we're sitting right now are treating financial problems pharmaceutically? Yeah. Because what's happening is they're going down to the doctors and they're saying, Doc, I'm having trouble sleeping. And he's replying, I've got something for that. So we're, ne- we're never getting to the, the foundational cause. cause. Now, in, you remember in one of the other parts of this yeah. series we're doing, we're getting to this whole thing that we have in the physical realm of disease. We're not getting, the medical industry is not addressing the foundational cause of, of cancer or heart disease or stroke or, or diabetes or any of these things. Yet the foundational causes are well known by a whole other branch of medicine known as orthomolecular medicine, which is uh, studying how people are getting sick because of what they're doing to themselves. Now, people can be depressed and it's nothing to do with, let's say, money. It could be a relationship problem. Yeah. Okay? So how many people do you think are treating relationship problems pharmaceutically because they're going to the doctor and the doctor's saying, well, I've got something for that? Yeah, loads. Absolutely. And then there are the people who say, I'm depressed, and they don't know why they're depressed. And this type of pathological depression is interesting because one of the big causes for that in Britain uh, is often vitamin D deficiency because we, you and I live in a country which hasn't seen the sun since 1968. And low vitamin D brings on a condition that I think most people have heard about, seasonal affective Sads, disorder. Yeah, Sads, that's right, yeah. yeah. Further north you go, you know, the suicide rates go up, depression goes up. We need... But we thought that was just, or I don't know, we thought that, or we, uh, was because, not necessarily vitamin D, but just oh, it's, it's a bit of a depressing part of the world to live in if you don't see the sun a lot. But it, it's actually, you're saying this is a, this is a vitamin deficiency. I would say, I would say that on. one of the few tests that psychiatry could do to determine whether somebody is, is depressed would be a vitamin D test. Yeah. I mean, that would kill them to do that, but they don't do that. Um, so many times I'll have somebody phone me up and, and they'll say, oh, I just don't know why I'm feeling this way. It's just, you know. And by the way, March and April are two of our busiest months of credence because people are suffering. They're coming out of a British winter. They're suffering the slingshot effect of a British winter as far as vitamin D goes. And yeah, it's, it's not a lot of fun to stare out the window at three feet of snow um, and see the rain and the fog and the, yeah. what I call the lead blanket locked down around yeah. your ears for about five months. Um, so these things need to be... They need to be checked and they need to be discounted. Now, the NHS has got a fantastic system for testing vitamin D, which most people don't know about. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can go to your doctor and request a vitamin D test, and he should give you a vitamin D test. Or if he won't, because he has to pay the 28 quid required to do the test, you can go to the mail order test kit service for the NHS, but you have to pay the 28 quid. And they're very fast, they'll send it out to you. the, I'll give the website out, it's vitamindtest.org.uk. How, vitamin. about, how do we interpret our results? Are they... okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Vitamin D test, vitamindtest.org.uk. Great site, NHS, one of the great things the NHS has got right. Very fast service, they send you the test kit, you unpack it, you pop the underside of your second finger, put four blood spots on a card, send it in, and they will email you in about five to seven days your, your, your number. Right Now, the scale runs from zero to nominally, there's no upper limit, but let's say 300. We want everyone where the Bondi Beach lifeguards are at 150. Now, how do we know that 150 is, is optimal? Because right now, NHS is saying, no, if you're over 50, you're fine. And you're not fine. The, the new paradigm that's coming out with a whole bunch of research shows that if you, let's say you wanted to be a lifeguard, and so you go and you're on the beach and you have safe, unlimited access to sunlight. What happens is that your vitamin D concentration in your blood builds and builds and builds up to 150. But anything over that, the sunlight action actually changes and kills off the additional vitamin D on the skin, maintaining your 150. So you can't actually, you can't take too much vitamin D? Then? Not with the sun you can't, yeah. no. Now, supplementation is a different thing, uh, and nobody, and by the way, supplementing with vitamin D is completely safe. The downside of it is that you, you often read an article in the paper where it says, yeah, vitamin D is very good for you, and you go, yay, now they're saying it, you know? And then you drill down the article to find out how much they're going to uh, get you to take, and it says 400 IUs. Well, yeah. 400 IUs is not enough to jumpstart a cricket, right? <laughs> okay. You need at least 
10 times that amount to maintain the deficiency you've already got. So <laughs> there's a therapeutic level that's going on here with not just vitamin D, but all nutrients that's being woefully and often deliberately undershot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, often you read about these uh, vitamin C studies and, well, we tested vitamin C because everyone's making a big thing out of it, but it's useless, it doesn't work, the studies showed nothing. You look into those studies, they're all low-dose studies. And that could be because there's maybe a little bit too much competition um, with regards to the pharmaceutical industry. Absolutely. Uh, there yes, definitely there's, could be. Yeah. Now, you were talking about people going into the doctor saying, you know, I'm depressed and then walking out with medication. Um, what, you know, okay, we, we spoke about divorce or not having a, a, enough money. What about, and there could be people sitting there thinking, well, what about schizophrenia? Mm -hmm. You know, what about bipolar disorder? Yeah. What about ADHD? You know, Alzheimer's, these are, these are severe. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say? What well, again, say the, appro the approach should be, um, I mean, essentially, when you go to see a psychiatrist, he doesn't sit down with a clipboard with 60 questions and starts getting into your life yeah. in terms of what are you eating? Uh, because if you are dehydrated, you should be depressed because your brain is 80% water. If you are malnourished, you should be depressed. If you're doing nothing but dining out you know, in fast food restaurants and eating junk and fake food all day long, then that's going to have a catastrophic effect on your health and also your mental well-being. If you are glucose intolerant, or if you are, if you've got the old, if you're on what we call the insulin roller coaster because you're just slamming sugar all the time because you're hopelessly addicted to the stuff, mm. this is going to cause mood swings. I lived in LA for a while, and um, every morning at 7:30 in the morning, eight LAPD squad cars would show up outside Winchell's Donut Store. And out of these vehicles would climb the most enormous police officers. And they're cranky, growly, wobbly, and they've got low blood sugar. And then they go in and they come out. And of course, there's this whole hackneyed thing about American police officers munching on donuts all the time, yeah, which they yeah. make fun of. But it's true, you know. And um, that can cause chaotic blood sugar, which can cause mood swings, depression, um, bipolar issues. I'm just saying that when you, if you're a doctor and you're getting somebody walking into your surgery and you've got eight to 10 minutes with them, you can ask some questions about what they're eating and how they're living and, you know, try to get to some foundational causes right there. I think everybody should be tested for vitamin D at least twice a year. Mm -hmm. I think if we did that, rather than the outdated cholesterol test, which should be replaced with a particular test, but the vitamin D test is absolutely vital. And the two times a year I would test would be April and October. October just before you just go into a British winter, because out. we know that elevated levels of, of vitamin D are great protection against flu, getting the flu and, mm. and getting colds. I haven't had the flu in living memory. So, uh, you know, brilliant. I mean, because, you know, so many people, and then we can go into flu jabs, but that's another story. We'll stick with, uh, we'll stick with mental health uh, for the time being. But one of the things I noticed um, when I was reading your book, Philip, is there seems to be or is that just my imagination? It's almost like a kind of, there's a sinister undercurrent when it comes to mental health. And I, don't and I don't think you need to read your book to know that. I think we intrinsically, if you talk about going by your own instincts, mm -hmm. I think we intrinsically know that there's just something not quite right there. Well, there's been some, um, there's been some, some tragic links made between violence inducing uh, psychiatric medication. In other words, we know that certain drugs like the SSRI antidepressants and even the benzos, we know that they have been implicated uh, in school shooting events. We know that uh, a small percentage of the population are susceptible to suicidal and homicidal ideation when they take these drugs. So part of what we do in the mind game is we're looking at a range of these school shooting incidents and we're seeing the pattern. It's right there and it's happening almost in every, every um, incident. Coupled with, I have to monitor the press all day long and you see these tragic events. Not a week goes by, you don't see some tragic event where somebody uh, takes a baby and leaps in front of a train or, you know, these are, th I mean, people have always had problems, but not in the way we're seeing today. And I collect people are these just not coping. They're not coping, but also there's something else going on. And when you, again, drill down into the article, you see, um, well, th this person was depressed. So, of course, the, the average member of the public thinks, oh, well, the reason they killed themselves is because they were depressed. Mm. Well, OK, just hold on a moment. As we go down, we realise they were receiving treatment. Fidel Castro's eldest son, classic case, that this killed himself. And uh, you drill down, it, it says that he was on medication, then he ceased his medication, and then all of a sudden, boom. And we see this pattern occurring when people are either coming off the medication or if they're, they're on it. Um, 
these, these, med these drugs are known to create these problems. And there's a fair amount of science now building up uh, uh, the saying that the psychiatrists themselves should really think twice before they're administering these. Uh, we have no way of knowing whether people are um, susceptible to these reactions from these drugs or not. We simply don't know. Some, some of the psychiatrists I speak to will say, well, now we're starting to talk more with the patient. We're trying to get into the problem rather than give them an additional problem to worry about. Having said that, there is a section of the population who are taking antidepressants, and it's working for them. So these manipulate serotonin in the body. Um, they create um, other issues um, that can have side effects to them as well. The ones that you were saying that can have a positive effect and that are helpful, is this something, though, that we should only be taking for a short, in the short term? Um, or is it something that, you know, is it depending on the specific case if you need to actually... Well, let's look, at it from, let's, let's, let's look at it from another uh, standpoint. Um, if we come at it from the metabolic standpoint, in other words, what can, what can we do with food and nutrients? If somebody's been fine up until, say, age 25, and then all of a sudden the gerbil falls off the wheel and they've got a problem, right? Yeah. The first thing, as far as I'm concerned, that should happen is that there should be a thorough investigation into diet, thorough investigation into their social circumstances. In other words, we've got to cover all the bases mm. so we're not dealing with a situation where somebody has just broken up. For instance, there was a young pilot who um, had a relationship, they broke up, um, and I'm sure he ended up down at his doctor's and said, Doc, I'm having trouble sleeping. And the doc said, I've got something for that. And he later flew an airliner full of people into the Alps. And when the German authorities raided his apartment, it was reported in the press that they found, quote, a small mountain of antidepressants. All right, so the first thing that we've got to be doing here is not immediately rushing to the drug solution. Um, we know, for instance, that a lot of schizophrenia, re, um, schizophrenic patients react very well to vitamin B3, niacin. We know that if you bring up the vitamin D, we've had several cases just recently where we've seen that when people elevate their vitamin D, then all of a sudden they're, they're different people. We see that if they... Um, switch from using sugar as their primary fuel source over to using beneficial fats as their uh, primary fuel source, that completely deactivates the systemic, um, the, uh, systemic inflammatory system that can be cause, uh, cause of um, uh, things like depression and things like that as well. Epilepsy, magnesium deficiency, vitamin E deficiency, vitamin D deficiency, these things are all should be uh, um, tracked down because they're in the literature as being causative. I think um, if we doing a programme on mental health, we absolutely have to touch what's happening in schools at the moment. Uh, and we have to um, ask the question, what is, you know, the, the, the rise in ADHD or, you know, the different terms for it? What's your take on all of that? It's, it's almost like, uh, I don't... Under a banner of special needs, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not minimising um, anyone who has children in school or if your grandchildren in school, mm -hmm. and they, they've got these issues, but it almost seems to have gone through the roof in terms of the percentage mm -hmm. of children that we look at them, we think, well, is that a behavioural thing? Is it? Uh, have they got something physically? Or mentally wrong or is it behavioral what, what's your thought on all of that area um i always ask the mums i mean if ever they a, a mum or a dad phones me up and they say you know um we've been told there's a problem here with our child the first thing i ask them is do you think there's anything wrong with your child i mean i have a nine-year-old and um you know she's just bonkers <laughs> she's i mean she's i'm the worst daddy in the world most days you yeah. know but that's because they're nine you uh, know yeah. and uh -huh. they're and that's what straight jackets are really for, by the way. Um, <laughs> so they're bouncing off the walls. So I always ask the parents, do you think there's something wrong? Especially mums that have had one or two kids before. They just know that they, the kids, you know, from four onwards, they just go through this whole barking mad thing and it doesn't end till they're 25, I'm told. Yeah. So that's something to look forward yeah. to from, from my side. For your but, side, yeah. And then there are, there, there are those with genuine problems, no question at all. And there's been this huge controversy surrounding vaccinations causing problems. And there was that movie Vaxxed that gets banned oh, every yeah, time, yeah. Robert De Niro and others. Um, there was a whistleblower apparently called William Thompson who came out of the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, saying that they'd, they had known all along there were problems with the, the shot and they had manipulated the data. And so there's all that going on as well. I think that um, my, my, my message to any families looking at, uh, looking at this program who think there's a problem with their child, let's look at the obvious stuff that we can fix right at home. Once again, set whatever the doctor's offering to one side. We'll look at that in a minute. Why would you not start giving them real food? Now, when I, um, 
when I put a piece of broccoli on my daughter's plate, she looks at me and she goes, you really hate me, don't you? <laughs> you know, so kids are kind of against a lot of that. Uh -huh. But I love juicing because kids love to uh, juice veggies and they, they drink that. And there's some straightforward supplementation you can give them, vitamin C, vitamin D. That's about all I can get through Anna at the moment. Yeah, you know. yeah. But she, she's great. You know, she's weathering the storms. She doesn't get problems um, where other kids are going down with flu and whatever's going around. Um, also, as kids grow, their brains are expanding and the brains require beneficial fats. So things like olives, avocados, um, fish, fish oils, things like krill oil, which is the, you know, the, the the, uh, the great new uh, phospholipid fat that people can supplement. Um, all of the seeds, all of the nuts, watch for allergies. But then if somebody has an allergy, that's an indication of a poor immune system. So you're back Because to... that in itself, again, it's going slightly off topic here, but that's something I never, you know, I didn't hear about anybody having nut allergies when I was growing up. This no. is a, a relatively it recent is. phenomenon. And, to, and flying with, now, yeah. when you're flying now, yeah. very often they'll, yeah. it's not just they don't sell it, but you're not allowed to eat them. I love, I love the, um, when, you, when you go on to, uh, one of the airlines in America, they, they serve you the packet of peanuts and on it it says, warning contains nuts. <laughs> yeah, just peanuts, yeah. Uh, talking of America, I'm just going back, uh, backing up slightly, um, when you were talking about the different medications and, you know, the possible side effects, you know, um, that was one thing I, I noticed on a relatively recent trip to America, the advertising a lot of, um, of non-prescription drugs on, on television and then they have to do, I mean, somebody has to take the deepest breath ever as a presenter. And list all the side effects. And list all the side yeah. effects or you lose half your screen because yeah. they're putting it at the, at yeah. the, at the bottom. On, on, one, on one level, it's comical to hear them do that. Yeah. Blah, 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 you yeah, know, and they yeah, rattle yeah. off the side effects. And then the screen all fills up with all of this and you're thinking there must be an easier way. Yeah. By the way, um, in addition to America, New Zealand also has direct-to-consumer advertising for drugs on TV now. So this, to me, is not helping at all. Yeah. And when we see, every time you hear about the school shootings or, um, you know, the, the violence, and weird, weird types of violence as well, you know, this, this type of thing was not happening in the 50s and 60s and before yeah. the advent of these drugs. So the mind game is a, is a I'd, I'd like to think it's an honest look, but it's a yeah. side of the picture that has not been presented because uh, newspapers don't like covering these stories. Pharma does a lot of advertising in newspapers, you know, so there's, they don't like covering these stories. It's almost like follow the money. Half That's the all time. it is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's huge. And um, the, the extent to which uh, modern society, especially the online media now, is contributing towards depression and people's um, sense of uh, um, or lack of, of self worth. I mean, I'm a, I'm, I, I loathe social media, I really do. I have to work with, with it because I one. really do. I mean, mm. um, and if I could push a button and have it all kind of end now, I would. Because what it's causing people to do is live in two worlds. Yes. You know, uh, in the book of James, it talks about the double mind. It talks yeah. about a mind profoundly yeah. at war yeah. with itself and ignorant mm. even of that fact. And we're living in the physical world, which is here with the table and, and the chairs and everything. And then we live in this, this ethereal world that's, that's out there where we can be bullied, we can be threatened, we can, um, you know, make relationships which are fake. I mean, I have over 3,900 Facebook friends. I think the only one I know is my mum. Mm. Or maybe you're my Facebook friend as well. <laughs> That's it. It's yeah. hopeless, mm. it really is. Mm. Um, so I it think... also says, just backing up slightly to what you were saying about James, you're a double-minded man, and this is giving you, you know, the, 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 you've got the real world and then you've got this fake world, and it says a double-minded man is unstable and in all, his in all he does. Yeah. You yeah. know, so that you, you've got this almost like a tug of war going on and people trying to measure their value and their identity on Facebook. Um, by posting something, and if they don't immediately get X amount of likes, mm -hmm. you know they're they're in a real state. Um, they're they're getting depressed because people that they don't know that they probably will never meet have not liked what they've just said yeah. about their life. Yeah. I mean, how on earth did we get to this point? And then on top of that, you have the trolls. So you've yeah. got trolls spilling out of the, uh, the the network where you can be as bestial as you like to your fellow human being and nobody and you get away with it because nobody knows who you are and and the police are just so overwhelmed now with all of yeah. this you know yeah. cyber bullying and all the rest of it they're not going to deal with it so yeah. it's a mess and the best thing you can do is just um, unsubscribe from social media yeah. you don't need it There's, if you want to speak to somebody pick up the phone yeah right? definitely
Absolutely. Definitely. And uh, I think it's it's really causing a scourge. It, 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 absolutely. It truly, truly is, if that's where we're getting our identity from. Um, you know, we, we are in the remaining moments, and I think it would, be, um, it would be amiss if we didn't say if someone is sitting, caring for somebody at the moment who's got Alzheimer's, who's got schizophrenia or paranoid schizophrenia, you are not suggesting for one moment that they stop their medication or anything like that. But what advice would you give? That's a, that's a great question and it's very simple. It doesn't have to be an either or situation. Oh, you can't do the drugs. No, no, forget that. Set that to one side for a minute. The point I want everyone to do, uh, to concentrate on is let's do the obvious things first. With somebody who's got Alzheimer's or cognitive impairment, there's some very, very good news here which I cover in the ABCs of disease. Same with schizophrenia, same with depression, same with ADD, ADHD, autism and that. There's a whole ton of stuff that can be done at home in terms of manipulating diet mm. um, and it's not being done because people are not being told that the, there, is a, mm. there is this whole other way mm. of, of looking at it. So I'm, I say to people, do your research on this and come to your own conclusions, but you've nothing to lose and everything to gain by looking at the whole metabolic side. I, I think it's interesting when you're saying about looking at the metabolic side, um, you know, we talk about physical, and yet people don't realise that, you know, the brain, the mind, we are a tripart being, which is what this series really is all about mm. in terms of looking at the different, you know, the different areas and, and where we need to go for help if we're in a bit of a state, and if we're actually all right, how do we stay all right? That's right. But nothing happens by chance, Philip, does it? Not in my world, it doesn't. Mm. And I think that if people just learn um, this, this is, I mean, my job is really to show people, hey, this is some great news here. Please take a look at it, it's very straightforward. Once again, the videos are great on this, and Food Matters has a whole section on depression in it, which I think is absolutely brilliant. And uh, you've got the doctors explaining that there's a, all of this research that's going on, looking at diet, um, and it's all good news. I think uh, I, a great piece of advice you've given is not just for small children, but you know, certainly adolescents. You know, you know yourself. Is it just the teenage doldrums that your kids are going through, or your grandchildren are going through, or is it something you know, it's slightly more serious? Uh, lots of places that you can go for help. That Philip has been saying. Uh, we're in the remaining seconds, so thank you very, very much indeed, as always, Philip. Uh, remember, you are watching part of a series that uh, we've been doing with um, Philip Day here, and uh, you know, lots of places you can go for more information. And don't forget that all important website of Philip's uh, www.credence.org. Stay with us here on Revelation TV. Always much more to show you. God bless. God bless, or even God bless. I'll see you soon.